Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see from my surroundings, I'm sat somewhere different. I'm actually out on my balcony because today I want to show you my little urban garden balcony tour. Now I live in London, England and my balcony is actually east facing and I get sun in the mornings, which is great for my plants. And I thought I would share with you guys my balcony tour today. Everything I grow in my garden is actually edible, so I have a number of fruits and vegetables that I have throughout my garden, which I'm really proud of and I'll show you in a minute. But I just wanted to show you in this video that you don't actually need a large backyard or any sort of backyard. You can grow as many things as you want on a balcony in the middle of living in a large city. So I am recording outside, so I apologize in advance if you guys might not be able to hear me as clearly as my other videos, but hopefully you understand that, you know, I do live in the middle of London and there's gonna be some noise in this video. Because I have a lot to say in this video, I'm actually going to list some timestamps on the screen right now so that you can jump around to the parts of the video that you find helpful. And I'll also make sure to list all the timestamps down in the comments below. The different parts of this video include my balcony garden tour, how to get started with a balcony garden, how to set up your plants for maximum sun exposure, and finally how to water your plants. I'm super proud of my little urban jungle or my little urban garden that I've created. Everything you actually see behind me and you're gonna see in this video actually started just from a seed. I started from seeds and then they've now grown into these amazing plants that you see behind me. So thumbs up if you enjoy gardening as much as I do. So as promised, the first part of this video is going to be giving you guys a little bit of a tour of all the different types of fruits and vegetables that I do have in my garden. So starting off right here, this is a plant that I've had for quite a while and this one actually didn't start from a seed but it is a lemon tree and hopefully someday soon it will grow into an actual tree. I haven't had any blossoms or any sort of fruit yet on this, but it is a lemon tree that was gifted to me and then I put it into a pot so that it can grow a bit bigger. Year on year it has grown, but honestly it's a tree and it'll probably take some time to grow larger. Over here I have some of my tomato plants and this is only a few. I think that this is only six or seven of my tomato plants. I have tons of tomato plants throughout my entire garden. I'll show you some of the bigger ones that actually have fruit already. This one's baby. I actually started planting these a little bit later and that's why they're a bit smaller. So as you can see I've already put up canes as well and these canes are put into place so that the tomatoes can grow upwards and tomato trees do get quite large so the plants themselves seem like they're bushy but as you tie them against a cane they get pretty tall and I'll show you later in the video exactly how tall they get because I have more on the other side of my balcony but these are my baby ones as you can see there's not very many flowers on these ones but these are my baby tomato plants so these are my red onions so as you can see from these two pots they're pretty full and I think I planted a few too many onions in these pots but they're nearly ready for harvest onions are a great option to plant in pots and also on a balcony because they're so easy and you can you know have quite a few onions at your disposal when you pick them up and then you can start cooking with them. I have a little bit too many in this as you can see there are just too many in there but I do love onions and they're very easy to grow so I've grown them in a pot. So coming over here you can see a little bit of a struggle for me. This is my strawberry plant. Now I tried to grow quite a few different strawberries this year and unfortunately all my plants have died and this is the only kind of surviving one and it really didn't make it that far and I'm really really sad that I can't seem to grow strawberry plants. If you guys have any tips or tricks for strawberries and how to grow them the best you can on a balcony, can you please leave me a comment down below because honestly I'm really struggling with strawberries. Now moving over here you can see that I have quite a few chili plants. Now I love chilies and I think that they are so delicious to cook with so I've planted quite a few chili plants. I have some all along the wall here. I have some growing here. They're also in the center here and then I do have even more over here. Now I have a two to three different type of variety of chilies and I'll actually show you that I have some chilies just here. You can see here there's a chili there's another one down here. There's a little baby one. And then there's a longer one back in the corner here. And then on this plant, you can see that there is a chili just here. Look how big this guy is. He's massive. The few different chili plants I have is actually a Thai green chili. I have a cayenne pepper plant. And then I also just have 
plain Anaheim chili. So those are my three different type of variety of chilies. I'm really excited to eat with them. I've already had a few that I've harvested and I've eaten and they're so spicy and delicious. So moving down into my garden, you can see here, this is the majority of my plants. If I take a step back, this is the corner of my balcony and this is where the majority of my plants live. Now, all the tall plants that you see along the railing, those are all tomatoes. So you can see how large my tomato plants have gotten over time. And they're all in pots, so they all started and continue to grow in pots. They're not in the ground, and they're so big now, and they're producing so much fruit. And as I showed you before, the tomato plants that I showed you before were babies, and these are kind of fully matured and are producing fruit. And if you see just closely in here, You'll see that there's tomato plants here and there's tomatoes here. That's one variety of tomatoes. I'm actually planting three different varieties of tomatoes this year. I'm planting plum tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, and heirloom tomato. And as you can tell, I love tomatoes because I have a ton of tomato plants out here. If you love tomatoes as much as I do, leave me a comment down below of what your favorite variety of tomato is. I personally really love plum or grape tomatoes. So let me know what your favorite tomato is down below. So as I get closer, you can see that these bigger plants are ones with flowers and you can also see the different type of fruit that they're producing. You can see down here that they have different type of tomatoes growing on there. And it is so exciting to see all these plants started as seeds and now they actually have fruit on them. So this is a different variety of tomato. You can see in here that they are heirloom tomatoes. So they are the ones that are a little bit fancier. You can see more of the heirloom variety here. And then over here, you can see that these are the Roma tomatoes, which are growing. And finally, over here, you can see that these are the plum tomatoes. In the corner here, you can see that I have a raspberry bush or vine. They're growing quite tall, and you can see that the plant is actually flowering. So you can see here that these are actually going to be raspberries. So they're going to actually produce fruit. And I'll show you that I do have a few green fruit in here. So if you look just here, you'll see that there's some raspberries coming out there. Also down here in the center, I have Brussels sprouts. So this is my first time growing Brussels sprouts and it's kind of exciting and new for me. And they're such strange plants because they grow like cauliflower, but really the Brussels sprouts grow underneath the leaves. And I don't actually have any Brussels sprouts to show you guys yet, but it is a winter vegetable. So likely the winter vegetables will be showing in the later part of this season. And finally, right here, I have a blackberry bush. Now this one is not exactly fruiting yet like my raspberry bush, but you know what? It is growing and it started as just a cutting. So I'm very proud that it has the leaves and it's starting to grow out and hopefully soon it will actually flower. But if it doesn't flower this year, that's totally okay. I'll probably see fruit again next year. This is an overall view of my balcony and all the different fruits and vegetables that I am growing on it. As you can see, I've really optimized space to make sure that I have as many plants as I can in my small little balcony. And you can see that they're mostly placed on the far corner of my balcony because that's where I get the most amount of sun. Part two of this video is going to be going over how to actually get started with your balcony garden. So my first recommendation is to start to plant your seeds indoors. Now don't plant too early. I made the mistake of planting my seeds in January and actually those seeds just didn't grow. I didn't have crop start. So what I'd recommend is planting in February or March and make sure you start planting in small little pots because these really help with the warmth and the water content in them really helps your seeds get started. So when you start planting in January, February, ideally actually March, I'd say February, March is better than January, make sure you plant in these little pots and make sure they're inside in a nice little warm, well-lit area to make sure your seeds start growing. My next tip is when those little plants start to grow and you start to see little leaves form on those trees or those plants, what you're gonna wanna do is transfer them into bigger pots so you give them a little bit more space to get nice, big and strong and I put them in these size pots which are basically medium size pots but remember to keep them inside in these pots until about April. I move my plants all outside in April and what I'd recommend is to move them outside after the first frost. Now where I live in England, London is relatively 
like not super cold over the winter, but you don't want to move your plants out too early. I'd recommend waiting until you get at least a week or two of consistent weather that's above zero at night. So for example, you want to make sure it's at least five, six degrees at night, and then you can move them outside because then your plants won't die of frost. Also, when you transfer them outside, you're going to maybe want to consider buying bigger pots or at least more space for them to grow. Because as you can see from behind me, these are massive plants now. And that's because they've had the room to grow and flourish. And I'd recommend always keep sizing the pots up and keep making sure you give your root structure enough space to grow. So the third tip I have for you guys in making your own balcony garden is to make sure you set up your plans for maximum sun exposure. So as I said earlier in this video, my balcony is east facing, which means I get sun in the mornings. And you can see that there's still some sun hitting uh, my plants in the back corner right now. And that's why I've moved all my plants to that side of the balcony because that's where they're gonna get the most sun for the longest period of the day. Another tip I have for you while you are actually planting outside and putting pots out on your balcony is to move them around so you want to make sure you're moving your plants to where the sun is hitting them so that they get as much sun as they can now I know because I've planted tomatoes a few years running that tomatoes love the sun there's never enough sun for them so I always try to plant my tomatoes as far into that corner as possible because they're gonna get as much sun as they need what I recommend is when you are planting seeds look at the back of the packet and it'll tell you how much sun exposure those types of fruits and vegetables will need and I would recommend that you put them in the right place in your balcony so tomatoes for example love sun and they need a lot of it so put it in the corner where there's the most amount of sun versus onions for example don't need as much sun they don't they don't need it as much as tomatoes so I put them on a side of my balcony where they are shielded from the sun versus the tomatoes get a little bit more sun so just find balance and make sure you move your pots around so even if you don't have a lot of space what I like to do is I like to rotate my pots so that they can all get sun throughout the week so one day they'll be sitting here another day I'll move them elsewhere so that they can get equal amounts of sun peppers also really love sun so I tried to put my peppers along the um, barricade where I get the most amount of sun exposure. So part four of this video is actually talking about watering your plants. It's so important to set up a watering schedule to make sure you're feeding your plants appropriately. I actually water my plants first thing in the morning just because they are getting a lot of sun in the morning and I want to make sure they are very hydrated. The best way to tell if your plants are watered enough is you're going to want to either stick your finger in the soil or get some sort of gauge to tell if the soil is moist. You're always going to want to make sure there's moisture in the soil to make sure your plants are growing and have a healthy the environment and enough water to grow. Now you want to make sure that you're not overwatering your plants. An easy way to tell you're overwatering is if your plant leaves actually start turning yellow and that means you're putting way too much water into the pot. What I recommend is setting up a watering schedule for once per day and once you water the same time every day you'll see that your plants start growing and flourishing but in the summer months especially when it's super hot like when it gets over 30 degrees in London I tend to actually plant water my plants two times a day which means I water in the morning and the evening just because it's so hot and they're so thirsty and you can see the leaves start to welt over and that's a clear sign that they do need more water. So another tip I have is to make sure you cut off the leaves towards the base of the plant. So when you're watering, you don't want to water on top of your plants. You're going to want to water down at the base and you're going to want to make sure you try to hit as little leaves as possible because the wetter your leaves get, the higher chance that you're going to get some sort of insect or fungal or any sort of issue with your plant. So you're actually going to want to water towards the base and take off any leaves towards the bottom of the plant. Don't worry. It's not a big deal. It won't kill the plant. It'll actually help it grow further. Another tip I have for you guys is when you are watering and you are planting things in pots or on your balcony, you're going to want to make sure the soil is extremely rich in nutrients to help your plants grow over time. So what I do is I actually put miracle Grow into my water probably about once every two weeks and I water the plants with miracle Grow so that they have a better chance of growing stronger and last longer and make sure the fruit is actually pretty big and ripe. So I would recommend some sort of miracle Grow or some sort of, you know, all-purpose feeder for your plants because they are in pots and they're not in the ground. And so you want to make sure you're replenishing that nutrients. Another tip I have is a bug spray. Now, you might be lucky and there might not be any bugs, but I've always encountered aphids or some sort of bug that ends up growing on my plants and I'll usually use some sort of bug spray and once you use a bug spray usually they never come back again but I'd recommend having one on hand so that you can make sure that they don't eat away at your fruit or at your plants. 
If you want any of the products that I'm talking about, I'll link everything in the description box below. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and I hope you guys got some tips and tricks on how to start a balcony garden. So please do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave me a comment down below if you're actually a gardener yourself and which type of plants or which type of vegetables and fruits that you've planted out on your balcony or in your garden. Leave me a comment down below what you guys are growing because I'm super curious to know what's in your garden. Oh, and one final tip that I have for you guys is as you continue to grow out your fruit and veg, save the seeds. So what I mean by that is when you grow a tomato and you actually eat that tomato and you open it up and there are seeds in there, what I'd recommend is saving those seeds, drying them out on a tissue paper and making sure they're fully dry and then saving them in some sort of plastic baggie so that you can use them next year so that you can plant your plants again instead of having to buy seeds every year. I think that's super amazing to go from seed to fruit fruit to then back to seed again to grow your plants again. I think it's super rewarding. So easy tip is to save your seeds from your fruits and vegetables to use next year. So guys, that brings me to the end of this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please do consider subscribing. I am a small YouTuber and it means the world to me if you subscribe to my channel. I upload two times a week and the next video to go up is actually a Motivational Monday video. So if you're interested in content like that, please do subscribe and make sure you turn on the bell notification so you know exactly when my videos go live. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great day, week, month, wherever you are in the world, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye.